Hello and welcome to Kitquake. My name is Ileana and I'm a librarian at the San Francisco Public Library. If you are like me, you love reading and hearing from the people who write and illustrate the books that we love to read. Today, you will meet some wonderful, talented writers and artists. So let's get started. Helena Kuri is a writer of books for kids and the young at heart. The Paper Kingdom was a number one indie bestseller and appeared on many best books of 2020 lists. Congrats. In addition to children's books, Helena has also written a screenplay for Netflix and articles for publications such as the Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, and Salon. She works as a vice president at Sony Pictures by Day and dreams up story ideas in her spare time. Her forthcoming children's book includes Rosa Song and Sora Seashells. Helena currently lives in Los Angeles, but has also lived in other places in the United States, Asia, and Europe. Visit her online at helenakre.com. Welcome, Helena. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much to everyone at KidQuake and SFPL. I am so happy to be here. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my latest picture book, which is The Paper Kingdom. But before I delve into the story, I'm going to share a little bit about my background because the story is actually based on my own history. So let me share my screen so that you can see some photos and some other things that I plan to share. So first, here's a photo of me with my parents when we first immigrated to the United States. So we moved from South Korea to Los Angeles when I was about one or two years old. And here are some photos of us when we first arrived. And something important about this time in my life is that my parents, um, they didn't really speak much English. And so they only had a few job opportunities before them. So during the day, my mom worked as a babysitter and then my dad worked as a furniture mover for a furniture company. But then at night, they would work together as night janitors. So keep that in mind because that's gonna be really important when I talk to you about my book, The Paper Kingdom. Okay, so on the next screen, this is my third grade class photo. And the reason why I'm sharing this photo with you is because here I am standing in the second row and um, this was my favorite class because of my teacher, Miss Niece. Miss Niece told us stories every single day. She read books to us every single day. And whenever I could, I would get a first row seat in front of her so that I could get as close to the book as possible because I loved stories. I love stories so much that Miss Niece encouraged me to write my own stories. And I thought, my own stories? Okay, I'll, I'll try that. And so I wrote a story about a talking chocolate bar who kept talking even as it melted in the sun. And so Miss Niece thought this story was so funny and so cute. So she entered it into a school uh, story competition and it won, it won first prize. Here's a little illustration I did for the story. And um, I was in the third grade then, so my drawings weren't so great, but I kept drawing and drawing. So I still love to draw today as well. But anyway, when I went up to get my prize at the auditorium, I was amazed because I got a gift certificate for a local restaurant. I could invite my parents and my family. And then um, I also got a ribbon that said, you know, winner. And when I went back to my seat, I couldn't believe it because Miss Niece and my mom were in the audience and they were both crying. And that's when I realized stories are powerful. You should tell your own story because it can have so much power. It can even make grownups cry. I couldn't believe it. So here I am. Um, now I'm 10 years old in this photo. And my little brother, William, came along. That's his friend, Joey. And they used to follow me everywhere. They followed me everywhere because I told them hilarious stories about dinosaurs and wizards and dragons, and they wanted to hear my stories. And so I knew at that moment that I wanted to be a writer when I grew up, but in the back of my mind, 
you know, I, I knew that my parents were working hard still. They, they, they weren't working as night janitors at this point. My mom became a seamstress. My dad became a machinist, but they were still working so hard. So I knew I had to get a good job when I grew up. I went to Yale for college because I was working really hard at my studies. And then more than 10 years went by. I lived in different places. I went to law school, became a lawyer. I moved back to LA um, and became a lawyer and I got married. And I was finally able to help my parents with things like their house payments and traveling and things like that. But I still wanted to write. It was that itch that I kept having having, and I knew I wanted to write stories. So I wrote stories. I wrote stories for kids because I've always loved children's books. I wrote stories about all these different people around the world. I wrote stories about dinosaurs and dragons. I wrote stories about aliens and robots, stories that I thought kids would love. And you know what? I sent them to publishing companies, which are the companies that make books. And you know what they told me? Nope, no thank you. They did not want my stories. They told me that my stories were too generic, meaning that they've seen stories like that before. My characters didn't sound realistic. Um, and I was so sad, I couldn't believe it. Miss Niece loved my story. I won a story contest in the third grade. So what was going wrong? And I asked one of my writer friends for advice and she said, think about something that really uh, impacts your heart something that makes you feel something. Think back to your childhood, to your own history. Think of something that either makes you laugh or makes you cry because readers read to feel. And so I thought, well, remember how my parents used to work as night janitors? That really stayed with me throughout my life. And so I thought, why don't I write a story about that time in my life? And so I wrote The Paper Kingdom and wow, the response from publishing companies was so different. I got offers from left and right. And so now I'll take you into the story. And one thing that I want you to know is that here's my name, Helena Cooley, but the artwork was actually done by Pascal Campion. He's an illustrator who lives here in Los Angeles. And I'll tell you a little bit about him at the end, but let me take you into the world of The Paper Kingdom. Okay. So here's the book, The Paper Kingdom. And what I love about the cover is that here's my main character, Daniel. He's sitting on a stack of books. And here are his parents cleaning up the office because they're night janitors, just like my parents were. And um, what's really amazing is that when Pascal first showed me the cover, he asked me, what do you think, Helena? Do you like it? And I said, I love it because he didn't know this, but my parents used to clean a law firm. Remember how I became a lawyer? Part of the reason I became a lawyer is because they used to clean a law firm at night. So let me take you inside the paper kingdom. Mama and Papa were night janitors. While they got ready for work, Daniel got ready for sleep. Tonight, he was so very tired. He snuggled into his bed in a corner of the apartment. Suddenly, bring, Mama answered the phone. Oh, I see, that's okay. She walked over to Daniel. You have to come with us tonight, little bug. Too sleepy, mama. I'll wait for Auntie Clara. That was Clara. She can't come tonight. Can I stay upstairs with Dwayne's family? No, we asked them for too many favors, Papa said. Then I'll steer, stay here by myself. I'll be good. Papa shook his head and helped Daniel change out of his pajamas. Their old cars sputtered as they drove to Mama and Papa's work downtown. I love this page. This is probably my, my favorite page in the book because driving to work late at night with my parents was my strongest memory of that time. So I love that image by Pascal. The big glass building always looked angry. It seemed to say, stay out. Can't I just sleep in the car? Daniel asked. I'll show you a photo of the real building my parents used to clean at the end of my presentation. But in Pascal's imagination, he thought the building should look like this. It does look kind of scary, doesn't it? Now here's a page where I had to think really hard as a writer because they see Sam, the security guard, but I wanted to quickly show that Sam recognizes Daniel because Daniel has actually come to work with his parents before in the same office. 
and I had to quickly get Daniel and his family into the elevators and up to the offices. So um, if you read the book yourself, you'll see how I did that. Now here they are upstairs. Daniel was so tired, he felt like crying. When can we leave? Mama and Papa didn't answer. From a big closet, they got brooms, mops, sprays, vacuums, and buckets. So many tools. Daniel sneezed. Why is that stuff so dirty? Because they keep the kingdom clean, said Mama. Daniel was confused. What kingdom? So this is a, a very um, interesting portrayal of what I experienced as a kid because I was cranky. I was tired. I didn't want to be at this late office so uh, alone with my parents when everyone else is eating dinner or, um, or watching TV or getting ready for bed. I wanted to go home. So my parents encouraged me to use my imagination. They told me funny stories about the people who worked in the offices. They uh, zoomed me around in empty wastebaskets like they were race cars. And Pascal actually told me that he loves this page. And I asked him why. And he said he liked the way the light was on the parents who were working in the dark. And Daniel is standing in the doorway just looking at them. And that really moved me because that's exactly why I wrote this story. I was trying to put a spotlight on the people who are normally invisible in our society, the night janitors, um, even the firefighters who work late at night that we don't see, the police officers, all the people who work um, during hours when we're all sleeping or, or doing other things, they're hard at work. So I wanted to put a spotlight on that community because they're very important. After all, custodians are essential workers, right? The paper kingdom, Papa said. Didn't we tell you before? This is the land of the paper king. The paper king? Now Daniel felt awake. How come I never saw him? Where is he? Let's go see, Mama said. Maybe he's in his throne room. They went to a large room with a desk as long as a banquet table in a castle. A tall chair stood behind the desk. Looks like the king's gone to bed, said Papa. Let's clean up for him. And here's a page where mama is sweating while she's picking up all the paper, papa is sneezing. And so you can see that the parents are working really hard. And Daniel asks, but why do you have to clean the kingdom? Mama dusted, she sneezed as she worked. And then mama says, shh, don't upset the queen. Where is she? Daniel asked. Papa led Daniel into the hallway. She's usually over there and she's the busiest of all. She sends paper to everyone in the kingdom. And here they are cleaning the queen's area and Daniel's helping out. He's watering the queen's plant. Let's check out the bathroom, Papa said. I don't have to go yet, said Daniel. I know, but let's make sure dragons aren't hiding there. Dragons, Daniel scooted behind Papa. Oh, don't worry. They work for the king, Papa said. They're small and friendly, but sometimes they're afraid. Of what, Daniel asked. The king and maybe the queen. And here they are at the bathroom and you can see a hint of a dragon in the stalls. That's all in Daniel's imagination. When they got to the bathroom, Daniel was glad no dragons were there. Papa cleaned each stall. Maybe they're in the kitchen, Papa said. Dragons love to eat. And here they are in the kitchen. It was a disaster. Smart dragons, said Mama. Guess they won't get caught today. Papa turned on the light. Mama wiped spills and picked up the trash. Why are dragons so messy, asked Daniel. They should pick up their own trash. Mama said, maybe they ate in a rush and forgot to clean up. They don't mean to be naughty. But why do you have to clean it all? It made Daniel hurt inside to see Mama and Papa clean such a huge mess by themselves. Not fair, I'm gonna yell at the dragons. He angrily threw a banana peel in the trash. And in this scene, Pascal, the artist, chose to zoom in on Daniel's face because he's growing a little frustrated. And remember how I said that as I was growing up, the memory of my parents working as night janitors really kind of uh, weighed in my heart. So I kind of felt frustrated too. Like, why are we here alone late at night when everyone else is relaxing at home? Why do my parents have to clean up other people's messes? I knew that that was their job, but you know, as a, as a little kid, it kind of um, hurts your heart to see them working that hard by themselves. 
And a lot of kids don't get to witness what their parents do at work. But I had that, um, I guess that blessing that, which turned into a book. Uh, so let's move on. No, little bug. Only the king can yell at dragons, Mama said. You know what that means? Daniel shrugged. Someday you'll have to be king, Papa smiled. Then you can sit in the throne room and tell the dragons to be nice and neat. Daniel liked the sound of that. Can I see the throne room again? Daniel sat in the tall chair. He closed his eyes and imagined a kingdom with small dragons who picked up their litter. In the castle, papers were piled high. In the throne room, the chair seemed to reach the sky. So this is a very important moment when Daniel realizes he can be the king. Just like I realized, oh, my parents are cleaning a law firm, but someday I can be a lawyer. I can be a writer. Remember, little bug, mama whispered. Remember to be nice when you become king. The dragons work hard too. She hummed as she wiped the windows. And now here's the ending of the story. Daniel is back in his bed. That's what you call a full circle story because he's back where he started from. Daniel didn't realize they were home until he felt mama tuck him in. He snuggled into his bed in a corner of the apartment. He thought about the paper kingdom. He decided if he became king someday, he would not yell at the little dragons, but he'd make sure they cleaned up their mess. That way, mama and papa wouldn't have to. And there's a little author's note at the end. And if you pick up the book, I hope you'll take a look at it because it talks about my own story, why I was inspired to write this book. And at the very end, you see the family sitting together. And that was uh, how we were before my brother was born. Uh, my brother is six years younger than me. So for the first six years of my life, it was just me and my parents. And I'll show you some cool photos now so that you can see um, some more info about the illustrator and as well as my parents. Let me just get to that page. Okay. okay. I will just share my screen right now. Okay, so here you have my parents, a photo of me and my parents um, at that phase of my life. And then here is a photo of my parents in front of the actual building they used to clean. They used to clean floors three and four because it was a law firm with a lot of different floors. Um, and this photo was just taken right before the pandemic. So about two years ago, they're standing on Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. And just some info about the illustrator. This is Pascal Camping, the illustrator. He illustrates uh, magazine covers, as well as uh, he does animation for the movie studios. And he also lives here in LA. And I wanted to show you um, my dog Sherwin because he inspires me a lot. He actually also keeps me on schedule. When it's time for me to write, he reminds me by staring at my face and kind of taking me to the kitchen where I prepare a cup of tea and get re ready to sit and write. And so I wanted to um, encourage everyone out in the audience to find inspiration wherever you are, around, just around you. And it's, it's so important to tell your own story because um, we all have interesting stories in our lives, only if we pay attention. And uh, sharing your voice will maybe resonate with somebody else in the world, just like my book has. It's been really amazing. And thanks to my book, I get to talk to people like you. And um, if you'd like more information about me, please go to my website and you can subscribe for some fun news that's coming up. I'm gonna be revealing the cover of my next book, Rose's Song. So I hope you'll join me there. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your, your story, your family. Um, your process and your your titles. Um, I you. think folks are just going to be so inspired. Um, I really like how you connected um, your third grade experience to to your to your life and to the paper kingdom. So we do have a couple of questions for sure. you. Yeah, uh, you answered a couple of them already. Um, mm -hmm. One question that I wanted to ask, um, and you did answer it in, in a way, but um, mm -hmm. I still want to get it out there because it came from some, some fans. Um, sure. How did you get the idea for the dragon that's in the bathroom oh, of the office? I, 
being yes. placed in the book? <laughs> right. Good question. So I chose to put in dragons because, you know, it's a paper kingdom. And in a lot of fairy tales, uh, kingdoms are often populated by dragons, or there could be dragons in the forest living nearby. You know, I mentioned that when I was starting to write stories, I wrote stories about dragons and dinosaurs and everything that kids would love to see in a book. And so I knew that somehow I wanted to squeeze in a dinosaur or a dragon into the story. So when Pascal showed me his illustrations, his first sketches, he had a few dragons sprinkling here and there. And I said, Pascal, can you put in some more dragons? And so that's why there was that page when Daniel's sitting on the throne and you see a, a bunch of dragons surrounding him. I love that Pascal included a bunch of dragons instead of just one. So I thought that was really cool, but that's a great question. Yeah. And what do what does your mom and dad think about the paper kingdom um, since the book is based on your experience with them? I love that question because it reminds me of one of the most moving moments of my life, which is when I first told my parents that the paper kingdom was going to become a book published by Penguin Random House, the biggest publisher in the world. We were sitting in a restaurant and um, my dad got really quiet and my mom and I looked over at him and he had started weeping. So it was the first time in my life I'd ever seen tears in my father's eyes. And I think it's because he was remembering how hard life was back then for us. Uh, you know, they were just working nonstop and trying to uh, make ends meet and to know how far we'd come and to know that their own story was turning into a book. How fabulous is that? So even a difficult time in a person's life can become a piece of art, which is really amazing. Um, I think um, I really appreciate and I think what resonates a lot is that there are stories everywhere in your life. So um, how is writing books uh, for kids different from your other job of working at Sony Pictures, a movie studio? Right. Well, Sony Pictures also works in the world of imagination because they make movies and make believe. So it's all kind of similar in that way. However, writing books for children is different because I let my imagination soar. At work, I have to be pretty serious. I have to look at contracts and I have to um, go to meetings and very much grown up stuff. But when I write children's books, I imagine that I'm a child again. And I love doing that because, you know, childhood is a time in your life when you feel like anything is possible. And I feel that endless sense of possibility whenever I sit down to write a kid's book. So it's a lot of fun for me. That's so cool. Um, do you have any more books coming out? Um, can you share a little bit about them? Yes, so Rosa's Song is my next book coming out uh, next year, and it's going to be made by the same company, Penguin Random House, and also illustrated by the same artist, Pascal Campion, and it's a story about two kids from very different backgrounds who live in the same building and become best friends, and what I really also enjoy about this story is I put in a pet parrot who has a very central role in the story because I love, I love animals. I just really respect um, the animal kingdom. So, so I hope you'll uh, check out the book next year. And if you want more info, you can go to my website. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Helena, for, for your time and your story and answering some of our questions from youth. Um, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone in the audience, to Kid Quake and to SFPL. Thank you. So that was incredible. Um, give oh, me some thanks. snaps. Make sure everybody gets snaps some back snaps. to you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you feel inspired um, too. Uh, before we leave, I want to remind you all that you each have a library card at the public library called your scholar card. If you forget your library card number, you just have to visit your local library. We're open and ask the library worker for your card number. This will give you access to a ton of books, movies, audiobooks, and more, including The Paper Kingdom. So thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you at the San Francisco Public Library soon. Thank you. Thank you.